Hello grade 10s and welcome to this lesson on grouping data. We group data, especially large sets of data, to make it easier to analyze. We will be doing this by creating a frequency table. We're going to cross over to Gerard. He has been asked to motivate his school to bring in more cans for a recycling competition. He will use statistics to help in his campaign but is struggling with displaying the data. Let's join him now as Eloise helps him. So Gerard, did you find out how many cans each class has collected already? Yes, we went to the teachers and asked them for their data. But we didn't know what to do with it. It's just too much. Here's our list. Okay, let's start by thinking about what it is you want to show with this data. Well, we want to show the principle that some classes haven't collected that many tins and they really need to start collecting. And we want to show him that other classes have collected over 100 tins. So if we can put all our information on a graph, maybe that will motivate the other classes. Good idea. It gives them a picture of how they're all doing and what they need to aim for. So what do you need to show on the graph? Do you want each class listed along the x-axis? Well, we thought about that and there's 25 classes. So if we put a bar on for each class, that would be 25 bars and that would be difficult to read. Okay, so you want to show how many cans each class has brought without labeling the classes. It sounds like you need a frequency table. You want to know how many classes collected how many cans. We tried to do that. We wrote down all the numbers of cans possibly from 0 to 200. Then we started putting tally marks for each class. Here's 8A with 84 cans and here's 8B with 195 cans. But we realized we don't want to end up with so many separate bars plotted on the graph and a lot of the numbers will end up with a zero next to them. It's good you realized this early on. You could have made a lot of unnecessary work for yourselves. Organizing data is supposed to make things easier to read. To make the numbers easier to use, we could make each row in your frequency table a group of numbers rather than just one number. Depending on the size of your data, you can arrange it in groups of 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 or even 1000. We call these groups of numbers class intervals and the table is called a grouped frequency table. Let me show you what I mean. Your data goes from 8 to 195, so your class intervals should probably start at 0 and go to 200. Right. We've decided for now we're only going to use our graph to show the cans already collected. Then we won't have to go past 200. And we've also decided to make a new graph each week. That way we can monitor our progress. And then maybe we can exceed 200. What size intervals do you think we should make? Would groups of five work? That means your table would go up in fives. So you would need, let's see, 200 divided by five. You would need 40 class intervals. That's still too many to show on a graph, Gerard. Oh, I get it. Even if we used groups of 10, we'd still have 20 class intervals, which is still too many. How about groups of 50? 50 in a class interval means you will only have four class intervals and you'll find it very difficult to see which classes are ahead of the others because they will all be in the same four intervals. So how about we use class intervals of 20? That would mean we have 10 groups and that will be so much easier to work with. I agree. So we'll make your class intervals go up in 20s. Now you're ready to make a frequency table. Right. My table has three columns. One for the number of cans, one for my tally and a third for my frequency. Hang on a minute Gerard. How many cans did class 9C bring? 40. Exactly. So where will you make your tally mark for 40? I see what you mean. There are two places I could put it. It could go in the 20 to 40 group or in the 40 to 60 group. Couldn't we just write in both? 
If you did that, it would mean two classes brought 40 cans, where in fact only 9C did. You need to rethink your class intervals so that there are no overlaps. And you should check how many numbers there are from 20 to 40. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. That's 21 numbers. So if I wanted 20, I'd have to start 20 to 39. So the class interval should be from 0 to 19, 20 to 39, 40 to 59 and so on until we get to the last one which will be 180 to 199 that's great because there are no classes that brought 200 cans so it's fine to stop at 199 Gerard is doing well so far, but before we cross back to him, I want to show you another way to represent intervals. We can use inequalities to represent Gerard's class intervals as x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 19. The second interval is x is greater than or equal to 20 and less than or equal to 39. We continue like this all the way to the last interval, where x is greater than or equal to 180 and less than or equal to 199. Note that we include the end values in the inequality. At this stage, you need to know how to group data into class intervals by using inequalities. Now let's check on Gerard's progress as he puts values into his frequency table. 8B collected 195 cans. That's over there. 8D has 62. There we go. Now I just have to add up my tally marks. Six classes brought between 0 and 19 cans. 5 brought between 20 and 39, and another 5 brought between 40 and 59, 3 brought between 60 and 79, 2 brought between 80 and 99, and 1 brought between 100 and 119, another 1 brought between 120 and 139, and so did 1 between 140 and 159. None of them brought between 160 and 179, and one brought between 180 and 199. I just want to check if I haven't left any classes out. There are 25 classes in our school, so let's see what the total adds up to. Twenty-five. So my tally is right. Great! Now you're ready to put this all onto a graph. Then you can make a big poster so the principal can explain all of this to the students. I'm going to suggest that you put your class intervals on the vertical axis. Then you'll end up with bars across your page instead of up and down the page. I think this will make the graph a little more interesting for the learners. Okay, so the y-axis will have the class intervals on it like this. That's it. Now don't forget to label that axis. It will be the number of cans. Oh, but what do we put on the other axis? That will be for the number of school classes, the totals from your frequency table. Oh, okay. So the highest number in the frequency was 6. So I think I'll label it from 1 to 7. Good. Now you can mark off a bar for each class interval. Sure. It will be 6 here, then 5, 5, then 3, 2, 1, 1, and 1. Nothing in this interval, and then 1 in the last interval. And here it is, the final graph. That's great, Gerard. You can clearly see how many classes haven't collected enough cans. All these classes have brought less than 100. It's also clear that this class is way ahead of the others. So the principal needs to encourage the other classes to catch up. 
if we carry on recording the cans as they come in, then we'll have to make a new graph each time. That's easy enough. We just need to make space on the y-axis above 200. You've done very well today, Gerard. The grouped frequency table and your bar graph provide some interesting information for the principal, Mr. Dlamini, and the school. I'm sure they'll appreciate it, and I hope it helps them bring in more cans. Well, grouping the data certainly made Gerard's job a lot easier. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Discovering Statistics task video. You'll also be able to learn more about statistics on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. You've got a data with destiny. Bye for now.